Hi, this is Lance from Langchain. So Meta's Llama 3 came out today, which is super exciting and something that I've been waiting for for a while. And I wanted to hop on here and, hop, and talk about how to build uh, reliable agents using Llama 3 that can actually run on your laptop, uh, so it can run locally. Now, just for a quick kind of refresher here, Llama 3 just dropped today. We can see looking at the performance characteristics for the 8 billion parameter model, they're very strong. So I've done a lot of work with Mistral, which was previously kind of my go-to. And it looks like on a number of popular metrics or benchmarks, you know, Meta, uh, uh, Llama 3 is, is indeed a bit better. So again, I haven't tested this yet. This is kind of like a first dry run, but uh, it, it's really exciting. So con to convince you that we can build local and reliable agents, I'm going to pick ideas from three different rag papers. They're all pretty sophisticated, and they're going to kind of roll up into this pretty in this pretty uh, kind of interesting and complex rag flow. So we're going to do routing from the adaptive rag paper, which will basically take a question, route it to either a vector store or to web search based on the content of the question. We're then going to introduce the idea of fallback. So basically, we're going to do retrieval from our vector store if the question is relevant to the vector store. We're going to grade our documents. If they're not relevant to the question, we're going to fall back and do web search. So that's an idea from this corrective rag paper. And then we're also going to do self-correction or checking of the generations to see if they're if they contain hallucinations and if they're relevant to the to the original question. And if they're not, we'll fall back and do web search. So the point is we're going to implement an interesting complex rag flow. We're going to show we can run this reliably and locally on my laptop. I have a Mac M2, 30, uh, 32 gigs, so it is a reasonably sized laptop, but it's not insane. Um, so first and foremost, what's an agent? And this is kind of controversial in itself, but a really good blog post from Lily and Wang lays out an agent as something that <clears throat> has planning, so it can break down tasks into smaller sub-goals or subtasks. It has memory, um, chat history, your long-term memory in a vector store, and it can use tools. Now, let's just say we want to use an agent to build corrective rag, which is that middle blue thing we talked about, right? So typically, when people think about an agent, they immediately say, oh, you know, React. That's like a very popular framework for building agents. Um, and it typically involves a flow that looks like this. For planning, uh, the LM will select an action, observe the result, think, and then choose the next action. Um, and again, you know, React agents typically will use memories, chat history, or vector store, and of course, can use different tools. So if I want to do this above flow as a React agent, it would look like this. I would take my question. It would pref I would first perform an action, like use my vector store to get documents. I would then observe the documents. I would say, okay, I need to think about grading them. And then I'd go back to my action. And then I would choose the grader tool. And then I would kind of go in this loop until hopefully I followed this trajectory as laid out here, right? So that's kind of how it worked with React agent. Now, I want to introduce another idea for impl impl implementing this, that uh, you can basically lay this out as a control flow. So instead of having an agent make a decision at every step in this like kind of in this loop, instead, we're going to lay out as the engineer ahead of time, here's the control flow I want my agent to take every time it's run. So I'm basically taking this uh, kind of like planning away from the LLM, and I'm actually creating a control flow that I'm defining. And what's nice is that the LLM then only has specific tasks within each of these steps. So, you know, in terms of planning, I'm laying out a control flow ahead of time. In terms of memory, I can basically use what I'm going to call a graph state to persist information across this control flow. Um, and, of course, it can be relevant things relevant to RAG, like documents, question, and in terms of tool use, you know, each uh, graph node, like we talked about, well, can use a different tool. Like the vector store retrieval, we'll just use our retriever tool. Um, the grader, we'll use a grader tool. Um, you know, the web search, we'll use a web search tool. So, you know, again, thinking about this, what are the trade-offs? React, of course, one of the big challenges is that you get lower reliability. When you have this React style flow, the agent has to make the correct decision at every point. And this is kind of when you can see things go off the rails and get off track, particularly with small LLMs. Whereas with LangGraph, you're actually laying out this flow ahead of time. So the, the agent effectively always traverses this path every time the LLM doesn't have to make choices about you know, which node to go to next uh, in kind of an unconstrained way. Um, now, in terms of flexibility, a React agent would be more flexible. So it could choose any sequence of actions through this, given these tools. Whereas the control flow that I lay out with LangGraph is constrained. So it only ever traverses this path. Um, but we'll see 
because of this constrained kind of control flow, uh, this, these land graph agents are very are compatible and actually quite reliable with, with local and smaller LLMs. And that's kind of one of the main benefits I want to kind of bring home to you today. So let's actually get to the code. Let's kick this off and start with the, the corrective rag piece. So that's kind of the middle piece of this overall agent we want to build. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a few of these components and just test them individually so you can see them working. So I have a notebook here, a few pip installs. Um, here's, again, my flow which we'll reference. Now, for local models, for embeddings, I'm going to use GPD for all, uh, which is, you know, from Langchain Nomic. I, I, uh, we have a partner package with them, with, with Nomic, and uh, I really like these embeddings. They're really good. Now, Olama just came out. It's available. Uh, sorry, Llama 3 just came out. It's available on Olama. Uh, and all I have to do is Olama pull Llama 3. Um, and the only other thing I'm going to reference is occasionally Meta Llama 3 has a particular prompt format, which we have to pay attention to. So that's really it. Now let's kick this off. I'm going to choose a local LM. I'm going to say Llama 3. And first, I'm going to do, I'm just going to build an index. So I'm going to build an index of three web pages, uh, blog posts that I like, and I'm going to kick that off. I'm setting a chunk size. Um, I'm using Chroma, local vector store, and that all ran. So cool. Now I have an index. So that's this piece, right? Basically, the index is the key component of my rag flow. I need to be able to retrieve documents. Then now I'm going to get into some fun stuff here. I want a retrieval grader. So that is this piece. I want the ability to retrieve documents and grade them for relevance relative to my question. So that's what's happening here. Now here's where Llama 3 comes in and I'm going to use something really convenient. I set my local LLM to Llama 3. Oh, Llama has JSON mode, which confirms that the output from the LLM is JSON. So my prompt basically just says, grade the documents and return a JSON with score yes, no. That's it. So I'm going to do a mock retrieval. So I'm going to say my question is agent memory. I can just call invoke here actually uh, on my vector store. It's a little bit more convenient. Um, I can kick that off. So this is now running. Now, one other thing I did, I set tracing in Langsmith. So I actually, and that already finished, but what's nice is you'll see me reference over here. Um, when this runs, um, as this is running, I can actually inspect what's happening under the hood. So we've called a chat Olama and we get this nice JSON out. That's great. That's exactly what we want. Cool. So that's our grader. Now for generation, I'm just going to do good old rag. So again, I have some custom rag prompt here, nothing too unusual. I'm still going to use uh, Llama 3, of course, and I'm basically just taking my documents and my question, I'm plumbing them into Llama 3. There you go. So you can see it runs pretty quick. Let's actually check over here. <coughs> um, so I can see my the time is around four seconds, not bad. And this is pretty cool. So I can look at the, my, my prompt, which contains the documents and the output. Great, so we're rolling here, this is pretty good. Um, and okay, we got our index, we got our grader, we got our generation done. Uh, I'm gonna find a search tool as well. So this is basically just a tool that I'm gonna use to query the web. I like Tavily for this, it's, it's kind of a really nice, quick, search tool. And here's where I'm going to um, basically define my graph. So all that's happening here is each of our, uh, I'll actually go up and show you here. So each of these pieces, these green things, let's call them nodes. So each of these is just a function. Okay. So this first node retrieve documents, I'm just going to wrap that as a function that's called retrieve. Uh, this generate, I'm just going to wrap as a function generate. Grade documents, again, is just going to be a function. Now, what you're going to see here is each of these functions, these are basically the nodes of my graph, I'm going to take in the state, I'm going to modify it in some way. So in the retriever node, all that's happening is I'm taking the state, which I've defined up here. This is a placeholder uh, dictionary that contains my state. So the way to think about this is <clears throat> the state is information that I want to persist across my agent. So again, it's kind of that notion of memory. It's basically short-term memory that lives over the lifetime of my agent. And it contains everything I want my agent to be aware of throughout this control flow, right? So for RAG, it's like question, generation, web search, intuitive stuff, right? So my retrieve node is just going to take in my question. Um, and this is going to be passed from the user. And it's just going to do a document retrieval. So I'm actually going to use invoke for this. It's slightly kind of a nicer way to do it. Um, that's my retrieval node. Generation, same deal. I'm just going to use that rag we defined above. I'm just going to call it, but I'm going to invoke it now on my graph state, my question and my documents. Um, and you can see at every node here, we just write, uh, 
you know, in this case, we write the question and the documents back out to state. So we just update the state in each of these nodes. That's it. Now, grading is what I would call, um, you know, another node. So basically going through our documents, we are grading them for relevance. And if they're not relevant, we're going to filter them out. And we're also going to turn on this flag to say web search. So if anyone's not relevant, we'll go ahead and do web search. And then web search is my final node. This is basically going to hit my hit my search API, that tabuli API, and again, just append those search documents to my state. Now here's where I'm introducing the idea of a conditional edge. So all that's happening here is those nodes we just talked about, they all just take in state, modify it in some way, right? So retrieval will just grab documents from my retriever, add it to state. Grading will filter those documents in state. Now I have this notion of an edge where I wanna make a decision based upon state as to where to go next. So this is where I can implement kind of interesting logic. Here, all I'm doing is basically I'm taking in state and actually I'm doing something really sim simple and kind of silly here. I previously set this flag web search. That's gonna tell it to do web search if any document was deemed irrelevant. Uh, we set that up here in this uh, grade documents node. So what all I need to do is in this edge, I'm basically gonna take in my state. I'm gonna see, does the state contain web search? If yes, then go to web search. If no, go to generate. And this, what I return, this string is just the name of a node, right? Web search or generate, that's it. So we defined all our nodes and that's it. We are kind of rolling here. Now, I'm just gonna scroll down. Uh, now, all we need to do is to build our graph. And I'm gonna kind of flag this, graph build. Very nice. And so all that's happening here is I'm actually just implementing the control flow I want. So I registered all my nodes up here. And here's where I'm just saying like the order of the nodes. So you can see my entry points can be retrieval. I'm gonna go from retrieval to grading. Um, and then I'm gonna add my conditional edge. Again, it's following our diagram up here. Retrieval, grading, edge. And then um, we can see here, uh, after web search, I go to generate, and after generate, I go to end. So that's all that's going to happen. And I can go ahead and compile that. So basically, I can run my graph, and let's see if this works. I kick that off. So you can see it ran our retriever. So I'm, it's, I'm basically printing out the steps as we go. Cool. So we're doing our grading right now. So we're grading our documents. First document's relevant. Second document's relevant. And I can go over to Langsmith here, and let's see what's going on. So it's kind of chugging along. So I can see... I can really dig into this. Like I can look at every every document getting graded. I can look at the individual grade prompts, the individual documents. This is all pretty nice. It's all logged for us. So that's all our grading stuff. And it ran. That's great. So we just built a little simple agent. Again, it has memory. It has state. It has planning. It has a control flow. Um, and it uses tools. It's an agent. And it ran locally, all on my laptop. So that's cool. That's kind of step one. Now let's beef this up a little bit. I can throw in the self rag stuff, which is what we see in our diagram up here in green. I just need two new graders, but it's gonna use the same stuff we just talked about. I wanna grade the, the generation for hallucinations. I wanna grade the generations for relevance to my question. <clears throat> so let's throw in uh, two additional graders here. And um, why don't I add them up here just for convenience. Um, so this is yeah, my hallucination grader. Let's kick that off. And I'm just doing a kind of simple test here. So all this is going to do is really simply um, determine whether or not there's the, the answer is grounded in my documents. So it's yes, no, right? If, if it's grounded, then yes. Otherwise, no. Um, and same here. So answer grader, um, you know, does my generation answer the question? Again, you can look at the prompts. I'll share all this code, of course. And so that all runs. Cool. So we have that. Now, all I need to add, this is actually pretty simple, is just one additional conditional edge to my graph. And let's scroll down to where my edges are. So you, you, we, before we defined decide to generate as a conditional edge, and again, what was that doing? That was making this decision. The next decision is, is this um, you know, hallucination conditional edge. So basically, if my hallucination grader uh, identifies that there's hallucinations, I'm going to feed back. And we will go ahead and see that here shortly. So um, here's additional conditional edge. And this is actually going to wrap in both of my checks. So you can see what's happening here is first my hallucination grader looks at the generation relative to the documents. It gets the grade. 
Um, if the grade is yes, um, then the generation is grounded in, in the document. So that's a good thing. Um, and then we go ahead and move on to test whether or not it's grounded in the, if relevant to the question. Um, and so it's basically going to return three things. Um, either the uh, generation has hallucinations, i.e. it's not supported by the documents, um, or the generation is, in which case then it's either useful or it's not useful. Okay, so that's kind of how we set up our conditional ledge. And all we need to do now is we can update basically our graph build here. And so what you're going to do is we can map from the outputs of our conditional edge. So get, remember, we're outputting either useful, not useful, or not supported. We map between those to the associated nodes we want to go to. So if it's not you, if it's not useful, we're going to fall back to web search. Okay, so that's basically this case. So basically, if it's not useful, doesn't answer the question, we're kicking back to web search, right? So that's kind of scenario one. Uh, if it's not supported, we try again. We go back to generate. Otherwise, it's useful, and we finish. That's it. So let's go ahead and try that. So we're going to retrieve again. We're going to check our document relevance again. Documents relevant. So we can see our agent rolling here. This is always kind of fun. Uh, just kicking, just chugging along. And I can close this down. So it's checking my relevance. It determined relevance is good. It's doing generation now. So that's also cool. Let's also open that up so we can see the whole trace in real time. Doing our grading here. Generation. So we, again, we can like really dig in. And then this is our this is our second grading step. You can really drill, drill into all these pieces. So I really like having my traces here where I can actually see what's going on under the hood in each of these pieces. And you can see it's like we're really nicely laid out. You can kind of close this stuff down if you don't want to see it. This is pretty cool, right? Um, so yeah, we're going generation, then we're doing our grading. And so this is pretty cool. So it did generation, it checked hallucinations. It found that the generation is grounded in the documents. Um, and then so the, the hallucinations are good. And then it found that the generation addresses our question. So that's really cool. We're really rolling here. And we really only need one more piece. So let's just throw in a router. Router is pretty easy. It's going to build on what we just talked about, actually. So a router is just, again, I'm going to use JSON mode. But here, I'm just going to basically say, hey, given the question, given what's in my vector store, so I tell it the vector store has uh, LLM agents, prompt engineering, and adversarial attacks, right? Um, if the question is related to those topics, use vector store. Otherwise, fall back to web search. I tell it return either vector store or web search. That's it. Let's just do a test here, make sure that actually works. Um, so I'm passing in my question related to my vector store. It determines, yeah, use the vector store. Easy. Um, so I want one more edge, route questions. Um, let me go ahead and throw this in here. So here's all my edges. Let's just add this one. Cool. So route questions. So again, follow exactly what we did before. We look at our question, invoke our router, depending on the router state, um, so I can probably get rid of these extra prints. Well, oh, why not? I'll keep them. Um, so basically, if the source is web search, then go to web search. If it's not good, if it's vector store, go to vector store, right? Really simple stuff. Um, cool. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's now build our graph. So we're going to set an entry point now. So my entry point's the router. It's going to decide to go to web search or retriever. Um, and then you can see this, this control flow is the same as we had before. That's it. Nice. And let's try that. So first we're going to route the question. So it's kind of printing that out and it decides to go to the vector store as we expect. That's great. And now it's following the same flow we talked about before. So we've just implemented this final piece of the routing. You can see it kind of went to, uh, it went correctly routed to our vector store. So that's great. Let's look at the trace. Um, yeah, so we can like dig into all this. We can look at the router. Yeah, so it makes the right decision. Let's go to the vector store. That's fantastic. Um, then it does retrieval. Then it grades the documents. We saw this before, so it's kind of nothing new. It's still chugging along here. We can look at the generation. Okay. And it looks like it probably finished. Very cool. So that's kind of everything. Now let's actually just sanity check this again. Let's Let's ask a question like related to current events. Uh, okay, so we can ask the question, who are the bears expected to draft first in the NFL draft? Let's see if that kind of all flows as expected. 
we can route to we'll route to web search, um, check for hallucinations. We can actually look at our land graph trace just to kind of sanity check what's going on. Um, cool. The bears are expected to draft USC star. Yeah, Caleb Williams. This is this is kind of the consensus pick. So that looks great. So anyway, we've seen in relatively short period of time that we can build a pretty complex RAG flow, as you see right here, with routing, with retrieval grading, with different interesting decision points, a fallback to web search, a, a grading of generations for two different criteria. We can build this. It runs reliably. It runs locally on my laptop. It runs with Llama, uh, Llama 3, 8B. And, you know, we can look at, you can look at Langsmith traces here. Um, we can look at, look at the latencies. This whole thing ran in 14 seconds, which is pretty good for something that's running locally on my laptop. Um, and you can see this is like a non-trivial rag flow, introducing ideas from three papers. They were able to do uh, all locally. And again, this idea of control flow is really what allows you to kind of lay these out in such a way that a local kind of agent can actually run reliably. I think that's like really an important point to, to kind of bring home. And uh, I encourage you to play with this. I'll make sure the code's public. But um, yeah, hopefully this is useful and feel free to leave any comments. Thanks.